Yo, what's up? So we are here today with another one. Outside the Wire was the movie of choice for the week. And this is your girl, Twinka, and I am here with Twin. Yo. And uh, let's get started. All right. Uh, since it's my month of pick, I chose for the first week, Outside the Wire. It is a new movie streaming on Netflix at the moment. Uh, let's see. Screenwriter is Rob yes Yescomb. I'm not sure how to say his last name, but <laughs> <laughs> he is known for the movie The, uh, the Division. I don't know how many of y'all seen that. I never but, saw it. Yep. Anyway, but uh, director is Michael Hofstrom. I guess he's German or something like that. But he's mostly known for the movie 1408 and uh, Escape Room. Oh, I like Escape Room. Yeah. So he was the director in the Escape Room. So we got uh, our characters is Captain Leo, Anthony Mackie. Uh, you probably know him from Falcon and from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And uh, Lieutenant Hart is uh, Damson Idris. You probably know him as the main character on Snowfall. So the movie uh, synopsis is in the near future, a drone pilot sent into a war zone finds himself paired with a top secret android officer on a mission to stop nuclear attack. So let's get into it. Mrs. Twinka, what do you think about the movie? <laughs> well, um, oh my god, this movie got on my nerves. It got on my nerves, yo. I felt like it, it was just the ending, you know. It, I felt like they they did a lot of like it's like let's add a lot of action or let's do a lot of over the top things. But the ending is what made me angry because even if the movie would have kept going the way it went and it ended different, I might have been like, oh, okay, I, I. but because it ended the way it ended, I'm like, no, I, I cannot. Like, why? Why do people keep wasting my time like this? <laughs> what did you think? So so the you saying the movie was good until the end? No, it wasn't good. <laughs> it was not good. But I'm just saying it wasn't horrible. It wasn't horrible, but it wasn't good either. But it's like I could I could tolerate it. You know, because I'm watching, you know, trying to see, trying to see. But it's just, it, it was just like one thing after the other. I'm like, come on, really? Really? You know, you know how you get those movies like, okay, whatever, whatever. You know, say maybe the ending is going to make me happy, but it just disappointed all the way through. Well, the, the storyline was okay at a certain point, but I didn't like how it ended up ending, you know, this so uh the character what's the name lieutenant harp um the guy from snowfall he ends up at the beginning of the movie he ends up confirming his own uh, drill i mean drone strike and killing two marines while they was in, in the middle of combat to save another 38. he feel like he was justified but everybody else seemed uh feel otherwise so I think at the end he was trying to get some kind of redemption. You know what I'm saying? It was it was it was weird like that. Yeah, I don't know. But okay, after the drone uh the drone strike, he pretty much got fired from his job as a drone pilot and he got sent out there to uh what's his name? Captain Leo and got put basically put on the field. Like you're not going to be sitting here sitting behind the desk anymore. You got to come out here in the field. And get your uh, boots on the ground, see what things really like. So, that I think that changes. That was supposed to be the change of aspect of his character development, and that's why he felt like he could go do things that's not in his job per se. Because remember, these are officers; these guys don't do none of that anyway, <laughs> unless you like really combat arms officers. But and that's a whole different story. But first of all, he was in the Air Force, and they sent him with Marines. It's like, okay, if he wanted to do all that combat stuff he would have picked a different branch and a different mos yeah that's true so he uh, obviously he wanted to avoid that so but yeah as punishment that's what it was they sent him to like where these marines were and pretty much yeah like you said like okay you're gonna go do field training since you don't understand you don't grasp the concept of how it is when people are infantry and they're out here 
um, dealing with it. You're behind a computer screen watching or whatever. So I don't. <laughs> I mean, he was so com uh, comfortable. Well, because at the beginning of the movie, when he was watching the fight, you know, they was in like a full fledged gunfight and he was watching from his uh, from the drone. Eating gummies. Eating gummy bears all cozy and stuff. <laughs> You know, it's like he didn't even care. He was nonchalant about it until he had to be uh, get out there. And then he got all scared. He was hiding behind a truck, about to cry and all that stuff like that. But, but I felt he knew that about himself. That's why he chose that branch and that M was. Well, hey. I mean, not everybody meant to be infantry. But it, my calf scouts out there, how y'all doing? <laughs> uh, I mean, he, he feel like. He was he was real nonchalant about it, you know. And I felt like for any soldier, you gotta know if you say you support MOS, you gotta know what it's like to be in combat. And it seemed like he didn't care about what they was going through on the ground. You felt like you were saving their life, but when you like combat MOSs, no life is worth another, you know what I'm saying? So all of them, if they if it was a chance they could have got them uh those two soldiers away. From um, out of harm's way, mm -hmm. you know they, they want that chance to save them. No matter if they all die, they didn't care. Well, I, boy, he was looking at it because remember it was only one guy, and he was like, "Yo, should we?" Well, it was only one guy over there, and then the guy sent another dude over there, so then it became two. Right. So I guess he was looking at it like, "Okay, we keep allowing this to stay here," you know. And then the truck had pulled up, so his whole thing was, you know, why why have thirty something body bags going back when? You know, you don't want any, but there could be two. Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, they they was in a bad situation because people that yeah. were shooting at them was the high ground. They had the high ground, and then the van pulled up, about to put an RPG out the window and stuff like that. But, so they was in a bad situation okay. anyway. Right, right, and, and and so I don't get it. Like, I didn't get that part because I'm like, so the 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 truck that pulled up was it going to attack them, or yeah. was it not? Yeah, yeah. He thought. I guess he thought he seen something. We, I could barely see myself, but somebody was poking something out that window. That's all I've seen. He didn't know what it know what it was. Yeah, because because that was my only thing. Because I'm like, so didn't he save them? Because because he he did get in trouble and all that. I mean, I understand. You know, he didn't follow command or whatever. But right. but didn't he save thirty other people? Thirty. He saved thirty eight other people, but. But or did he not? Or did he just blow that truck up and there was nothing? There was no threat from the truck. He blew the truck up because it was some kind of threat from the truck, which they they didn't even really know what it was. But they didn't confirm it. Well, he confirmed it himself. But that's what I'm saying. So it probably wasn't nothing in there. But they told him to stand uh, stand back. So no matter if it was something coming out of the truck or not, you didn't follow orders. So, but they wanted that chance. They would have took that that uh, that RPG. Just to have the chance to save, uh, save the other two soldiers. But then when they killed everybody else, hey, that I mean, see, okay, so that's why I said I didn't like this movie because it's like I understand what they were trying to do or wanted to do or whatever the case may be, but it didn't make. They should have did like another scenario with it because it, I didn't understand it because I'm like, did he? Didn't he save thirty eight people? Like, I'm confused because if he didn't do anything, then we would have watched 40 people, families, you know what I'm saying? They, they, they had to go knock on 40 different people's doors. So I was confused because, like, they, what's in there at, what you know, what's in there a threat? Like, I don't know. It, it, that's what this movie just drove me crazy. It, it hurt in my head so much, bro. Well, so much. Uh, it was no real, like, real, it was a plot. Don't get me wrong, it was a plot, but. I just didn't like how it developed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just didn't like how it developed. And this is a screenwriter in me talking. You know, I didn't really like how how it would how it developed at all. You know, he met Cap, uh, Captain Leo, and and Leo uh, he go out with him, find out he's an android first, then goes out with him to drop off these damn vi uh, vaccinations and stuff like that. And then what happened? They go. They um. Go with the soldiers that he just end up killing two of their people. He ended up going with them you know, with the little platoon. So they get under fire and stuff like that. Him and uh, Captain Leo and Lieutenant Hart, they end up running off and, you know, trying to go drop off that uh, uh, the vaccine to the hospital. 
you know, they made it to like some big thing. There, there was nothing going on here. There was no juicy like meat of the plot, you know. Yeah. The only thing that uh, really happened after that was when you find out Cap, uh, Captain Leo was operating uh, for himself and not for anybody else, you know. And he ended up wanting to nuclear strike, uh, send a nuclear strike to to the American mainland. You know? Did this movie take place one day? Uh, I want to say two days. It 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 was nighttime. It came back day. I well, think this. Two, I think it, I think this movie took place. Because oh, no 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 yeah because he went back and told him what that he removed the chip from the guy. Right. The drone strike. The drone strike was one day. He went in front of the, like the the court martial people, whatever. Another day. And no then, no I mean like from the time he got to um the the base with Captain Leo. Yeah, from the time he got there until the end. I think that was like a day and a half. So. This is why, again, I want y'all to follow me on this. This is why I can't stand this movie. So, in one day, one in less than 48 hours, this man <laughs> went from <laughs> some Air Force guy, like, behind the scenes, controlling drones in the air, to some hardened infantry, saving the world type hero. Like, please. Please. Yeah. Like, I can't. Nobody changes their mind that quick, so. Like... He literally, the movie just got my nerves. But anyways, <laughs> continue. I'm, it's making me angry. I mean, I, I'm, I'm getting angry thinking about this movie. I mean, it. That's why we. That's why I picked the movie. It was a new movie. It's Black History Month. You know, it's February, so we were just gonna try it out. You so know? you just want me to stay angry because of Black History Month? No, I, 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 I just stay angry because of Black History Month. I mean, I th- I seen two well-known black actors. You know, so I'm like, okay. This might work, you know. So we celebrate Black History Month, you know. They still winning. You know how much Netflix probably paid them for this movie? Uh, they still winning. All right. So we got a couple questions, a couple topics that I came up with from watching this movie. So um the first one is advancements in technology and the military. So this movie posted to take place in 2036. Hmm. And it's 2021. So what we talking about? 15 years? Mm-hmm. Do, do you think? Do you seen the? Did you notice all the advance, uh, advancements they had? There oh, wasn't. I mean, oh yeah, I'm about to say there wasn't even. No, yeah, they were. So they had like the little machine soldiers or the robot dro- soldiers. Androids, yeah, yeah. And then they had the dog versions. Mm-hmm. And then I don't think you uh, the security at the gate. You know, we uh we got cars now. You know, everybody got an ID card that you scan at the gate. And it's manned by real soldiers. They had the drone standing there scanning your eyes. Right. Look at look look the robot right now, soldier. And then he scanned you and you went on about your way. But see, I didn't get that either. So what is it? When you join the military, there's a chip put in you or something? Like how is it looking no, in my eyes? I mean, this scan your eyes. Or is he is he like photocopying my face to put it on foul or something? No, I mean, you know, your eyes is not everybody's eyes is not the same. Your eyes is like a fingerprint as well. And so is your ears. Your ears is like fingerprints. They everybody ears is different. Everybody eyes is different. Everybody toe prints are different. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, but I didn't but, get that. That's why I said they try to make it seem all super. I didn't understand it though. It's like okay, you did that, but where? Like, what are you looking for? Okay, continue. This is what makes me mad, bro. <laughs> it made me mad. So, do you think we gonna have these technology advancements? In 2036, 15 years from now. I'm sure because Elon Musk is like, he own it. He try- <laughs> right. he is trying to advance the world. I don't think I, don't, I need to get into something. My Elon Musk shit. I need to make a drone to and sell it to the United States <laughs> government. So they pull him in the army, you know what I'm saying? Or the Marines or whatever. So how you feel about like uh drones in the military? Yeah, I mean, we we there's just like I said, there's MOS now where that's what they do. You know, they, they're remote. They, you know, they fly the things. So we, we have that now. Um, no, they, uh, I mean, the drone is still a manned aircraft. Well, it's, it's an unmanned aircraft that was, that is controlled by a computer, which is controlled by a human. I'm talking about a drone that's walks around with you and got oh, its own like mind. Robot thing. Yeah. And they was, remember they was out there in the field. They were pulling triggers. They was killing people. Yeah, but the see, was killing people. So, but they, but they had to keep 
they had to keep talking to it like you know when the guy had moved it automatically went and pulled his gun that way and they had to be like you know like hey you know like talk to it like so it don't accidentally shoot a civilian and i feel like man yeah that sounds that look kind of dangerous well well i remember specifically when uh the two main characters, Lieutenant Harp and um, Captain Leo, they was leaving to go uh, to go with this other platoon to take the vaccines uh, out into the field, and they found two soldiers picking up uh, picking on this one drone that they called Charlie Nine, and they just kept hitting it with the butt of their gun. So they told Charlie um, Captain Leo stopped it, and he told Charlie Nine to load up. And when they went out and they encountered these people um, that pulled the guns out on them. Charlie Nine was the first ones to pull the trigger. They threw something, and Charlie, uh, the robot Charlie Nine shot one of the dudes in the leg, and that's when things almost got out of control. So it was as if then they had like feelings, or they they could remember the harassment, well, and not, they acted out on the field. Well, it's not no, not the not that. I feel like he felt like it was some kind of danger, and you gotta like stop it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, they just threw something at else. They being hostile. Let me put one in this dude's leg. Yeah, I didn't understand. Though. And they were so big and clump, like boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Like, hey, you can hear that from a mouth. What? But I, I feel like they would come in handy because you can put them out first instead of, you know, real lives out there. And if, you know, let them, things happen to them instead of the people. But that's a lot of money. You don't want your drone. You don't want them I mean, little androids getting... They was taking a lot of bullets. Like they, they had to use, from what I seen in the movie, they had to use like some big, like RPGs, grenades. They had to use some explosives or some just like huge fifty rounds and shit like that. Some big rounds to put those machines down. Right. You can't shoot a five five six at that machine. It'll eat that. You know, it was eating a whole bunch of bullets. You know, and but they only blew up with like it was soldiers standing around this machine. And everybody shooting at one position, dude come to the other position, shoot an RPG and blow the thing up. And now these dudes got damn scrap metal all in their face from this damn robot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they got hurt from just a robot being there too. But I mean, but you gotta think about it. If all the countries got robots, then there would be no need of sending civilians out there. So then there's no need for war because at that point it's like it's like a a 3D, a virtual. Well, not virtual. It was like an actual warfare. video game. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I mean, that's right, what's in our machines here and going to fight your machines. To be honest with you, that, that's pretty much what it is now. War is not fought, uh, it's not really fought on the battlefield anymore. It's like cyber warfare. You know, it's only cyber warfare is like 80%, 90% of actual war now. The war for taking over your systems and, you know, creating chaos. You could create chaos from online. You see people do it on Facebook. I don't Remember, like the word war. <laughs> I mean, so negative. Yeah, that's true. So but bad. I mean, it, that's just what it is. It's been like that since the beginning of time. So you remember um, what it was like? Trump got elected, and they talking about the Russians was meddling in the election, and they said it was some Russian like think tank or whatever that ended up getting on Facebook and um creating these groups group of people and enticing the other group of people the people they say that's partly how charlottesville happened hmm. remember that event in charlottesville uh where the um the young lady died she hmm. got hit by the car by yeah, yeah. the white supremacists i think it was but yeah that's they, they said that was the russians and they creating groups and enticing people and enticing the other the other other side too and just making things happen and they not they across the world but they making things happen in the united states making but kind of manipulating people and that's just what i heard from like other podcasts and stuff like that so i don't know for sure because i don't do enough research and all this shit but i'm just saying yeah that's way above my pay grade yeah i'm just saying so <laughs> but i think androids in the military is a good idea i hmm. think it's a good idea i mean to a certain degree um I mean, either way, you're going to save lives. You said, That's the number one thing. You How you save American soldier lives? You put machines out there. Even if you got it, if, even if the soldier 100 yards away with a remote control controlling them, telling them when to pull the trigger and when not to, you know? Mm -hmm. So he ain't going to be as jumpy as uh, jumpy as, 
as he would be if he was there, you know, because I'm pretty sure it happens a lot. They they um go into a building, you know, come around the corner, a kid how, jumps out and they damn shoot a kid, but you ain't gotta be as jumpy when there's a machine there, you know what I'm saying? But I'm saying, but how how efficient do you feel like that would be? Because are are these robots are they like you said, okay, so they're man so a uh, uh, somebody a soldier is you know controlling it or are they controlling themselves because on this show this movie they, they, they were controlling themselves You're right they had their own thoughts right well they didn't really have thoughts they well they were doing what they was programmed to do right right and then when something goes haywire or something messes up or something like that then those those programs might be a little off like Charlie Nine was the only uh, android out there that shot. It was other androids out there that was seeing the same thing, but he's the only one that shot that, that dude. That's in the leg. what I'm saying. So that that's the issue. So what if these things like what made him? Because they were messing with him. So what if mistreating these things gives them feelings? Because he or, or whatever it messes them up or whatever, and they decide they want to go against their who they should be working for. Well, they said they had a bad rotor or something like that when they was beating on the on his head back on on base they had to say he had a bad rotor or something like that it was something that's some. uh he said something he's all messed up so let's see my thing is being in, in the military like it's no way it's no how you gonna pmcs a damn <laughs> a, a damn <laughs> robot bro those those robot uh, those robots gonna be just as broken as some damn trucks we got, you know what I'm saying? I'm, also, I'm, I'm like, I'm thinking like, I'm like, okay, we talk, we talking about the U.S. military yeah. who hate spending money, who hate upgrading. Man, like, that shit ain't gonna um, work. I don't, I don't know if this would be a good idea. Like, see, to me, this is a whole different world. I'm like, bro, they got trucks that work. They got robots and little robot dogs that's actually walking. Wait, wasn't the robots right? driving the trucks, or was it people driving the trucks? I'm trying to remember. I don't think they showed anybody driving. So the trucks drive themselves then? It could be. That's a possibility. I'm not sure. I don't want to speculate, but they I don't remember so Leo, Captain Leo was driving. No, no, because okay, so the one scene where um um the lieutenant he was running out the building, like he had all the people, they were coming out the building, and he was like they needed assistance. Um, they needed help. Oh, that's when uh, they called in that drone strike. Uh, drone strike on his ass. Yeah, but before that, um, the yeah. the the truck came in and like, the little robots ran out of it. Oh no! So I think it was humans driving that truck because they just hopped out the back. Yeah, they just came out the back. Yeah, of they it. just hopped out the back. But you see the, I don't know what to call them. Well, the Ukrainians, I, I guess, because they was in Ukraine. So the Ukrainians had the the other kind of, of drones. They had their own drones. But these drones was carrying around 50 cows. And they got on all fours and started, started shooting these 50 cows while the American drones was shooting, like, uh, in fours That's and crazy. shit like that. Just think about that, man. Who want to be in war with something like that? That's crazy. Bro, I would not be out there. That's crazy. Not there. Like, they would have to do the draft to get people in that shit. I can't. You ain't lying about that shit. Like, they, there's no way. Like, I, I got, no... got one word for you. A wall. <laughs> I am gone. You, I'm, you finna have machines walk around here with 50 cows shooting shooting at me. And I got to stand next to this big ass seven foot hunk of metal and let him shoot this M4, the same M4 that I'm shooting. Mm-mm. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. Mm-mm. I'm straight. Man, that'd be a no go. I, I I don't know. I don't got no thoughts on it, but I can't. It, so far, if I did have thoughts, it'd be negative. I don't see the need. It, it it'll change the game too much, and you'd have to be willing to deal with all the negative that comes with it if you decide to, you know, add those things into, you know, the everyday like warfare. Right. Like, yes. are they are they going to formation? Like, are they going to PT? Nah. Like, <laughs> what machines? Nah, yeah, nah. they go to PT. Like. Nah. What are we? No, they sitting up at the motor pool <laughs> waiting on our ass to fix them, and they never damn get fixed. You know what I'm saying? Yo, the motor pool Mondays, baby, we gotta check on the machines every Monday. They going on rug marches? Hell no. <laughs> they gotta practice. Hell no. How you gonna take them out? That's too much oil from them joints that they got and shit. You gotta put oil on them joints, and you know what I'm saying? It's t- see to me, it it would be nice. It would be nice to have androids in the military, but to me, it's too much maintenance. It's too much maintenance. You're going to have to like almost 
create a whole new MOS just to maintain them, just to maintain them. Cause yeah. those things are going to need daily care, especially in a war zone. Like they was, they was in a uh, demilitarized zone, you know, DMZ. So they, they needed those MOSs to sit there and take care of those machines. You know what I'm saying? So how you, how, how the fuck you going to do that? You need a whole new MOS, and then you're going to have to train them. And th this MOS pretty much going to be engineers, you know, because you got to program them. You got to make sure all their body parts are working properly and functioning and moving and all that stuff like that, you know. But who's going to make it? Not the yeah. Army. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm speaking like this on, Worry about it, bro. this on Air Force stuff right here, bro. They got all the money. So I heard. So I heard. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, I mean, uh I mean, but it'd be nice. It'd be kind of cool. I think it'd be kind of cool. But if you got a machine like Captain Leo, he he was like now top he was secret. a beast. Now something like that, I feel for espionage. Yeah. Now, man. Now something like him that'll change the game because he looks like a regular soldier, but this man is a machine. And now if you put something out there like that, that's that'll be like. I don't know. That'd have to be in that Geneva mm -hmm. Convention code, right? I, I don't know, because he he pretty much well, no, no, no. Because when the boy shot him, he did like was dying. No, no, he or was well, it depends on which time when when the heart shot him. Because remember, he had him backed up against the wall and he was shooting him like in the gut with like a nine millimeter or 40 cal Glock or whatever, and he was eating those. But it was only to when he was shooting like grenades at him and like blowing chunks out of oh, him yeah. that he was actually dying. You know what I'm saying? So to me, remember what he said too. I think the most important about this whole uh, most important thing about this whole whole movie, he was like, I I am an android. I'm top secret. I I was created in the lab or whatever, whatever. And he was like, my uh, you know why they put my face on here? Why why do I look the way I look? He's like, cause it explains like unity or something like that what he said my my arm says america my face says like we we are uni united you know what i'm saying so if he could out uh, be out here acting on the behalf of the united states he could they would more likely listen to him instead of him looking like a blind hair blue eye uh high school quarterback prep boy type thing mm. which i think is slightly true you think so? Yes. When you go over there to other countries and you see a, uh, other countries and they see a black soldier who uh, who may or may not be marginalized through through race and all this stuff like that, they pr probably feel like he could, he could, oh, he would probably would relate to me better than this white guy. Because, you know, mm -mm. people from other countries already think Americans are privileged, but they know the they systematic do. racism that goes down for black people. So, I mean, I think I think they would probably relate to it a little bit more. I don't know. I don't. I mean, it, due to our pop hit, due to you know black folks' pop history things like that, it's like okay, well maybe he might be he might be more cooler or more down to earth. But I don't think when we talk about war times and war places that they're like okay, well he's a black guy, so let's not shoot him. Oh, no, that's not what I, that's not what I say. Okay, so uh, somebody like come from Afghanistan or something like that. Who you think they will relate to more? Like you think they would relate to the blind haired blue eyed white boy, or do you think they were gonna relate to a black guy? Mm -hmm. I feel like he might relate more. Not relate, but probably just just to feel a slight bit more comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. No comments. No comments. Uh, yeah, I don't know. No comments. <laughs> well, all right. This this gone forever, but we gonna come back with the segment seg two. Yeah, segment two of this podcast outside the wire. We got a couple more questions, and I want to see what you think about a couple things. And <laughs> this this might get a little interesting since you. <laughs> supposedly had this military mind even though you're not in no more i'm in still so we're gonna we're gonna see how we feel about certain subjects and stuff all like right. that all right let's get it
And we're back. Segment two, y'all. Got a couple questions. Let's see. Uh, let's talk about the difference between combat MOSs and support MOSs. I, I want to see how you feel. like, Because <laughs> some people, you know, they feel like you didn't serve your country properly if you wasn't in these combat MOSs. If what? you stayed stateside your whole career, mm -hmm. you stayed state, uh, stateside, you never went overseas, you never deployed, you always was in the motor pool and stuff like that. You didn't do nothing but work a, not, or a, a, 6 a, a 6.30 or 6 a.m. to 5. And, um, yeah, they just wore the uniform. You know, some people feel like that. And those are people that are crazy because, honestly, it takes an entire team to run a functional military. And these soldiers, you have to train. It's not like, okay, you just trained for 90 days and now we're going to send you to war. Okay, now come back and you're good. Now here's the next one. We're gonna you gotta go to war. You gotta go to, like why there, you know, there, there's not that much there, it don't make no sense to me. Like there, that's why there's different you gotta think of think of it like a like a restaurant. Everybody can't be the chef. But honey, you can't have no restaurant if all you got is the chef. Because who who's open who's cleaning up? The chef ain't gonna be cleaning up these tables. Who's taking the orders? The chef ain't out there taking the orders. You know what I'm saying? Who who's doing the prep? So it takes a lot of people to make this thing run. So I, I think that's nonsense. When people talk like that, it is talking crazy because we all get the same paycheck. You know what I'm saying? We it's everything at the end of the day the same. So well, not exactly. Not exactly. Well, you overseas, that paycheck is a little well, bit well, of course, of course, at that point. But outside of that, you, you know, just once you come back, your pay go back to whatever I'm getting paid as well. Yeah. It's not like you go to war. And then at that point, you come back, you get extra money because you've been to war. You're a combat. You know, it's not, it's not how that works. Well, you know, if you ask somebody like my dad who was in Vietnam, he was like telling me being a veteran isn't isn't enough. You got to be a combat veteran, which I don't know why. What 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 good is that going to make me in the civilian life trying to be a combat veteran? You know what I'm saying? Just because I haven't been in a combat zone doesn't really make me less than anybody else you know what I'm saying that's that's a, I, once a veteran is always a veteran right so it, i don't know so yeah that's why i said it's just that's just how some people are with certain things but to me it makes no sense because at the end of the day we are all brothers and sisters in arms we all went through basic training we all went to our aits we've all went to fit you know our field trainings whatever the case may be like just that the the luck of the draw some people went to combat some people didn't you know because you got even people who get orders and go to a, a certain place and they're like oh well you didn't go to this particular place so that's still not considered a deployment right. so and it's like okay but i got deployment pay so what are you talking about so is people going to say whatever well you know i got some dudes in my unit right now that's been deployed and been overseas but they don't get the de deployment patches they can't wear deployment patches because they wasn't in the combat zone. Mm -hmm. So the army seen us uh, seen us the same way. You wasn't in the combat zone. Why are you getting a deployment patch? Yeah. You deploy. You just deploy for fun. You know what I'm saying? It was like field train, uh, extended field training exercise. But I mean, they do. But like I said, they get well. They don't get all. They don't get all the different pay that you would if you went to a combat zone. But they mm -hmm. still get extra pay and things like that. But I don't know, like, it's, it's just one of those things where it's like a, um, a, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know how to say it. Like, you can say that, okay, I been here and I did X, Y, Z. And I can say I did this because there may be people who never gets to do that. They might put on a uniform, but they never go to a combat zone. But I have went to a combat zone. And because of that, I, I don't want to say you feel like you better than somebody, but I did something that maybe some people don't do that doing list. Okay. So, but to be like, oh, you're not a soldier because you didn't go to a combat zone is straight baloney because, again, you still got to have people back here doing support, doing other things while you are over there. Right. So. And see, me, I'm in the, I'm in Signal. So, people on the combat zone, like, really 
depend on my job while they like while they out there in combat, you know. And you know, we get talk tra- uh a lot of people talk trash to us, you know, because they know we're not my MOS really not gonna go in combat unless all hell breaks out. But I mean, you could talk about us, but you can't talk without us. That's like <laughs> that is the model for signal, you know what I'm saying? That's that, cute. I yeah, like that. Like, we are we are communication. We are communication. Nobody you can't get order you out there in the field under fire. How you gonna call in a drone strike without me? You can't you can't do anything without my MOS. That's what I'm saying. You'll like, be out there on the field by yourself. Right. You know? Every you need you need the whole team. That's why there are MOS. Trust me. Trust me. The military is not gonna be paying for people to do nothing. Everybody plays their role in this. Right. Everybody has their role, they play their role. So yeah, it is what it is. Everybody is needed. Everybody is needed. So so let's see. Um, how you think civilians? see like different MOSs in, in the military because I, I honestly because I joined at the later age I didn't know anything about the military I honestly didn't know that it was like all these MOSs I knew people had jobs and stuff like that but I was oblivious to everything I right. was oblivious and, to and that's all civilians you know, I see one soldier I automatically think he got a couple bodies on him <laughs> you know <laughs> Ranger, what is that? He's a he's a I all I knew was like Navy SEALs, Green Berets, and like Rangers. I know those dudes go on like special missions, special special ops and all that stuff like that. I know they go on like special missions and probably cut this is what I thought bro. coming down for directly from the president. It's like <laughs> shit, you know what I'm saying? Only knew what I've seen in movies. So I think Thank you, it. Hollywood, for him thinking that. Exactly. So I think that's how most people seen it. They they only know what they seen in fucking movies. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I to to somebody walking up to me like I'll be out there. I have to go to the grocery store or something like after I get off work or something like that. I got my uniform on and people like thank you for your service. I'm like you have no idea that what what I did today. Like that to me is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, they just being patriotic. So yeah, they gotta be patriotic, which I understand. I appreciate it, and I thank y'all for y'all uh, for y'all support for the same. Thank you for your service. But I'm telling you, you have no idea what I do on a day to day basis. And if you was to know what I do on a day to day basis, or what any MOS does on a day to day basis, that's not in a combat zone, you was like, what? Well, no, but see, but that's the thing. You you gotta because you can't. So, okay, so you gotta look at it this way. Everybody, even at a job, even at a regular job, at a regular job, for the most part, you don't do crap. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, I mean, unless you got some crazy job, and you probably are doing a bunch of hard stuff. But for like, for me, all the jobs that paid me well, I didn't do nothing. I just sat there, chill. You know, every once in a while, you know, we gotta do our training, and then what we did in training, we might finally put it to use. So it's kind of the same thing. You can't expect like every single day to put human beings in high stress situations just so just so they can feel like okay now you deserve this thank you for your service because you've been going through hell for like the last i don't know since you enlisted like that's crazy to me like you a lot of it is training and training takes time and it's repetition and it, and it's it's is pretty much waiting until something is needed and then I mean, I don't know about other branches. I don't think I can talk about the army, but when something's needed, now we're going to send you over there and hopefully you learned enough or remember enough. And now you're going to put to use what you're supposed to be doing. Right. And that's what I'm saying. Our day to day, minus the little bullshit, our little, our commander, our NCOs or whatever could come up with it's it's training. So every day, in, if you didn't know every day in the military, we technically are supposed to be training. We are training constantly to do our jobs and that is it the only thing i do is work on my equipment you know check and make sure it's work and um practice on hooking it up we do that all the time right so it should become second nature to you exactly that's what we what we supposedly do but you only could do that so much how many times can you work on one piece of machine so then what do you suppose you do what? what what do you suppose soldiers do then? I, well, I mean, what can they do? So they the, whatever bullshit they NCO comes up with, that's what we end up doing. But I'm saying so exactly. So it's like, but outside of that, then 
what else are they to do? Like, okay, right. well, so, you, so if you're a soldier, you're going to be living in the field forever until you deploy. Right. Like, right. you're going to be living tense MREs until you're deployed. And then once you deploy, you are now a real soldier, and now you can go and live with your family. But, you know, there, there are field exercises like that right now. I understand. Like, part of my platoon right now been in the field. It's February. They've been in the field since October I and they're going to stay in the field until April. And they just, they playing army right now. So it, it's times like that have they, stim, um, what's the word? They are on the pretend deployment right now. Right. And that's what I'm saying. So, but it's like, so exactly. So what else is there to do? Like, there is nothing. There is nothing other than, other than constantly training and do your job. But uh, to, for, for, to my point, like if civilians knew what I do here, on what a you're daily doing? Basis. No, it's, it's what you're doing right now. Because, like you said, those guys are away from their family. They're away from their kids while they're out there doing their, tra you know, field training. Yeah. So, you know, they when they come back, maybe they are, you know. Oh, but it's different because they go home. They go home. This is not a regular field exercise. They go home. Oh and when God. we and when it's a twenty four hour operation, you know we'll switch in and out. You know, some well, you have a team that work twelve <laughs> hours and another team that work twelve hours, and then uh, they go home when the other team work uh, twelve hours come in. You know, they work their twelve hours, and then the other team comes right back in. You but know? but see, so it's a rotation, right? But they they're getting you used to if you do deploy, then you already have an idea of how these things may work. All right, 12 hour shift. Okay, but we we did 12 hour shift for something smaller. So we already understand that. So they're just getting you ready, or and then they moving you, they're getting you ready for if you do deploy. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't send soldiers up. I mean, they do, don't get me wrong, because there are people who enlist, go to basic, go to AIT, and next thing you know, they're on deployment. But I mean, they're just you have time to adjust to like I'm used to doing. Cause on a deployment, what do you think a deployment is not like soon you get there, you shooting all day. Yeah. So it's the same crap. You're going to be sitting there doing, looking at the vehicle. I don't know, just playing car, doing whatever. until like, all right, it's y'all round time. Y'all to go out. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be the same stuff. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm still new, so I'm still learning, but it still kind of feels weird when somebody see me and, Thank uh like oh be like thank you for your service. I'm like, lady, do you know I was out here sweeping the parking lot today? Like <laughs> and you telling me thank you for that. All this kind of bullshit uh, they be coming up with us to do is is crazy to me. It's crazy to me. But anyway, so that that relates to the question I was trying to get to about the movie. Like, we going back to combat MOSs, right? Do you really think there's a difference between a regular kill from you might get from an uh, infantry, an uh, infantry guy that might be on the battlefield, he actually get a kill, and the drone strikes. Is there a yes, there are different? You mean, I want you, I, yes, I know there's different. difference, but I want you to talk about it because uh, so we're talking about like a, a person shooting someone, killing them, and something blowing multiple people up at one time. Is that what we saying? Well, yeah, yes, and we're talking about. The what is the correct word? The distance between the two. There's a whole oh, big oh, oh. difference between oh, yeah. somebody actually like on a computer, like they playing the killing game, people. Play, yeah, like they playing okay, a video yeah, game, yeah, yeah. Uh, killing people with a drone strike. Yeah, somebody actually out there on the field yeah. pulling the trigger. Yeah. So the psyche will definitely be different um, because when you are. When you're there pulling the trigger, when you see that body drop, when you're there with all the different senses, the smell, the, the you know what I'm saying? When, you, when you're there with that, in that, that's much different from, you know, playing Call of Duty-ish. You know what I mean? Something you're like you're way somewhere else and, okay, you you sent out something and it done killed somebody. You know, you're like, okay, oh, they're dead. Right. Like, it, it's definitely different. Oh, that's definitely different. Yes. Yeah, I think our our main character lieutenant harp he uh that's one of the main reasons they threw him out there because they could tell the disconnect and you heard him when he was talking when he met captain leo he had like 127 confirmed kills or whatever like that right you know like imagine a guy in infantry getting those many confirmed kills 
You know, he probably be all kind of messed up in here. He probably seen all kind of body parts, people, damn head exploding and all kind of crazy yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. You know? That, that's, yeah, that's a big difference. It's, to and, me, it's a big difference. Yeah. A huge difference. Like, you, it, it came with compared. This dude was sitting there eating gummy bears, dropping bones on people, not mm-hmm. even caring. You know, but as soon as he got out there, he hiding, crying, can't pull the trigger on nobody. Well, that was only for a couple of hours. And then he turned to, like, the Super I mean, Saiyan. Yeah, he turned, <laughs> he, he turned to the damn John Wick and started just shooting at people. Even, even they tried, they put, gave him his own dose of medicine. You know what I'm saying? Because when he was out there at the library and uh, Captain Leo went supposedly chasing uh, the other super villain guy mm-hmm. Kovalov and he called in for help and they ordered a drone strike mm-hmm. and he know how it felt to be on the ground and somebody ordered a drone strike and you telling them no 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 and they do it anyway they damn near blow your ass up you know mm-hmm. so he got to taste of his own medicine and I kind of like that part yeah uh, I don't know I don't and even back to that part, now, now I'm cooking angry again. Now let's go back to that part. So they exactly what he did, they did to him. Right. But he got in trouble for doing it. Well, hey, rank is everything. <laughs> <laughs> rank is everything. Now that I think about it, I like, hate this movie. Bro, you just a lieutenant, bro. I it's a it. whole colonel out here talking about dropping bombs on somebody. They don't give a fuck about what you talk about, bro. Like, nobody care. You just a lieutenant. It's like if you die, you would have died, bro. That's it. But I mean, it's a, it's just a whole different thing. I feel like the distance of it, you know. That's why he he was acting all like he didn't care. He didn't care at all to me. Well, yeah, cause, I mean, look at these. You got these little young kids that be playing Call of Duty or all these little fighting games, and they just like, oh yeah, I got like twenty kills, you yeah. know. Yeah. You know what I mean, like. Shoot, serial killers don't be killing a hundred people. Exactly. You know what I mean? It, that's some work to have to kill a person in person. Yeah. Like face to face. Like I gotta do something to this person. That's a lot. So yeah. mm-hmm. to me, because I watched another TV show and uh called Homeland, and she was in there. She did a drone strike, but she felt so bad about it because she killed so many like innocent people. She was going at the terrorists. And she dropped, so she one of the drone strikes she did is like set up a whole season of it. She, in the first episode, she dropped, uh, she did a drone strike on a wedding that a terrorist that was supposed to be there, but the terrorist ended up not there. So you dro- you did a drone strike on a wedding full of innocent people. Wait, what? Wait, my head hurts. My head hurts. So uh, they, she had there, there was no other time for them to kill this terrorist but at this wedding that's what i'm saying they've been looking for him for years that's what they said and we finally got him and he's at this wedding so we gonna kill these people in order to get him in order to get him and at a she, wedding yep yeah, and she dropped the bomb right on that shit they couldn't send nobody out there like in no no, no like they didn't have enough time they didn't have enough time to send out a strike team or nothing like that. So they was like, we're going we to hit it with a drone strike. I'm glad I never saw that movie because that would be another oh, movie on my hate list. Oh, TV show. I'm glad yeah. I never watched it because that, no. So As soon as I saw that, I'd been like, next. Now, this was like, I want to say season three or four. So I think it was season three. But yeah, so she she bombed the wedding and everybody in there died except for like one kid. He was like the lone survivor. He was like the lone survivor of that shit. But the terrorists they was looking for was nowhere near there. I bet. So now you got all these bodies on you and you getting thrown out to the wolves by the CIA, you know, because uh, you made a bad decision on the drone strike. And, oh my God. and then the the country start retaliating. So as soon as they find some other CIA operatives, they start killing uh, killing them. I they, bet. You know, they, they went crazy. So, it, But she felt terrible about it. Like, that's my point. She felt completely but terrible. Was it, it her choice to do it? It was her because, yeah, she was running the CIA station. It, it was her order to do it. She put out that order to drop that drone strike. So, that ain't made no sense, bro. But it spiraled that one drone strike, f- spiraled to a whole chain of events that a lot of people died. Like, a lot of people died just from one that one decision. So, she felt terrible. She felt completely terrible. But this dude here, Lieutenant Hart, I didn't see no emotions from him. Cause you ain't gonna tell me you out here 
doing drone strikes but, and you ain't but, killing no innocent people. But see, that's the thing. Like he, in his mind, he wasn't. He was killing the enemy. Yeah. So like what she did didn't make no sense. Like I can see if it was like a hundred terrorists that you gonna get all hundred at one time yeah. at a wedding. We talking about one guy. So well, we gonna kill. She killed about 40, 50 people. That's what I'm saying. We gonna kill 50 people for one. Yeah. Then that don't make no sense. It was it was him and the rest of his family. So if they would have caught him out there in the streets by himself, one of his family might raise up and run the organization like his son, cousin, or you know what I'm saying, little nephew or something like that. It might jump up and try to run his organization. It was like, nah, we're gonna take everybody, you know? Okay, so let's let's move on to the next thing because we run out of time. The uh the justification for war. Do you do you think uh just I'm just speaking on America. Do you think it's for put to protect, like they say, or do you think it's for money or both? For uh, war, war has been a part of civilization from the beginning of time. True, and it's been for war. We have been through war for just simple thing as getting land. Um whatever the oil like whatever it's there's so many reasons people want to do war but i think it's just in the human dna to to want to be vicious we could say love flowers and all this happy stuff all we want but you look at little babies little babies don't know nothing but guess what you take some they little toy they're gonna try to knock the crap out of a little baby mm -hmm. like it's just in our dna to be violent in a sense but we have to train ourselves to not be but because of that, you are going to have times where, I don't want to say war, but you're going to have times where you may have to make a power move in order to make sure that your people that believe you and need you and depend on you are straight. So, you know, it is what it is, but. I mean, it comes down to it like war is money. You know, a lot of a lot of like people like in the White House or just whoever the people, some people really profit off of war. And I believe some some people reasons that are higher up, you know, they they want to protect us and they want to do it before something bad happens, like a 9-11 or something like that. They want to protect us from that kind of stuff, which I understand. But it's some other people that want to do it for money. But to protect this, you need power. Mm -hmm. And what power technically runs uh, comes down to is money. So to me, all these things coincide. You got to have money to have power, and you got to have power to protect yourself and to get the respect. Well, like you got to money, have, power, respect. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? you got to in order to get that respect, you got to have muscle. In order to show, it's kind of like gangs. You you think about gangs, like it is. in order to show that I am in charge and I'm the man, I got to do something so crazy that you like. You know what? We're not gonna mess with them. Right. These are the streets, or we know. Right, the, it's no difference to the streets. It's you not know, some money, power, respect. That's what you need in life. You know what I'm saying? You got the money, then you get the power. Once you get the power, you get the respect. And once you got respect, you could you. It'll be so much easier for you to protect everybody out here in these streets because ain't nobody really going to jump bad against you mm -hmm. when you got that kind of respect. You know what I'm saying? So the United States, I feel like looking for respect out here in these streets. <laughs> People be testing their gangster. Boy. Yeah, they be testing their gangster. So and like, they got to put man. them right. It's like, bro, I'm the man out here in these streets. I run shit here. You just live here. Shoot. That's the training day line. I'll fit you. Either. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Training day. <laughs> well, I'm saying. So, the, like, do you think this shit helps or hurts us? Because I know what the reason why they do some of these, some of these things while we are all in all these other countries. And that's what one thing I never realized about the military. There are military posts in so many other countries where, like, there's soldiers based in these countries. Mm -hmm. You ever seen? Are there? Any other country's military post in the United States? Hell no. That shit is weird to me. 
We're in Korea. We in Ho- oh well, not Hawaii. Well, we in Germany. But, but we got, in all these different countries. Right, but you gotta you gotta look at our history because you, you gotta look at the U.S. history and the reason why they had to shut up uh, posts in these places. You know, they're 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 well, still the US, in twenty twenty one. Well, yeah, because you gotta think about it. A lot of this stuff, it's not like these are, you know. 300 years old wars you know what i mean like yeah. some of this stuff is you, you can't fresh. you can't just change a mindset people thought process that quick and I, and yeah. to kind of jump off top a little bit when we start talking about racism in the u.s when people want to be like oh slavery was so long ago hold your pump your brakes pump your brakes yeah. because in order to change a mindset it it's going to take time and it ain't no okay we passed the law so y'all should be good everybody's good I'm sorry. That's not how that works. Right. But I've, there is, we in Korea, but we in South uh, South Korea. We're not in North Korea because North Korea is like a, a potential enemy. We're not in Russia, as far as I know, because Russia is kind of a potential enemy. But all our allied countries, we have posts there, you know? But why doesn't anybody have military posts in America? Cause we are the you. Cause the you. Why? Why would they need we to be? Dog. That what you why? Why would they need to be? Cause again, why do we need a German a German military post in the United States? Do you not know? Because do you not know that the U.S. went to Germany and what they did in Germany? Yeah, yeah. So do you not know what they did in Korea? What they did, like yeah. it is that's the reason why they're there. Another reason why I think they're there too is because not only the stuff that they did back then. I don't think that the United well, I think that the United States got so much balls that they don't think they would ever be invaded. Who but, who's gonna invade the United but, States? But, what 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 would you where would you invade? Exactly. Because the exactly. How, how the US is made up, like where you go you gonna invade Cali? Nobody cares. Like really nobody would care about Cali. I'm sorry. No, that's my not, California. That's people. not true. Go go ahead. Try, Drop California some, is about to float away anyways. No, nah, bro. Drop, <laughs> drop some troops over there in Compton and see what happens. See what happens, bro. That shit. Go ahead and drop some troops off there in South Fort, Fort Lauderdale where I'm from and like, see what my dogs do to their ass, bro. It's I'm, over. Drop some troops and drop some enemy troops in Texas. What is going to happen? You will never see these troops again. It'll be over. So there is no... That's why all wars are fought over overseas at least all modern wars you know the last war that was fought here was like what civil war the civil war was last fought, well, war fought on america's soil but all those but wars was... are fought over there no america has not fought in the war in the united states with another country well yeah because where were you i mean unless you want to have like the battleground like some country nobody lives in south dakota somewhere True. like where are you how are you like how can you do it? Yeah, you really can't. We are we we are we not talk. built. We don't have the infrastructure for war. We top dog out here. We top dog. So oh, all right. Let's wrap this up. Lesson, blessing, the curse. You go first. Cause I think the fans already know what I want. Uh, uh. I, I, I mean, it was slightly a lesson, but it's more of a curse because this movie didn't pan out like I wanted to. A lesson was like. It showed me how much how quick somebody could change. I mean, yeah, in forty eight hours. In forty eight hours, hours so he changed his mind. So many these <laughs> getting shot at changed his whole mindset. So that's it. it was a curse for me, guys. Like the ending was so crazy. Like really, this dude really was about to nuke the U.S. Nuke the U.S. And then they just sent something. Like, this this guy ran out that building so fast. I, let me tell you, I'm done. <laughs> He's like he got thirty seconds, and he gonna run out this building. <laughs> Yo, he got a perfect score on his PT test. I promise oh, you. He got more I than promise perfect. you. That boy got the not just a perfect score. He got the measure points at the end too. Shit, I can't. All right, y'all. We appreciate y'all for tuning in. We got a whole bunch of Black History. Well, just Black movies coming up for Black History Month. Let's stay tuned. This next week's movie is going to be Queen of Slim. One of my favorite movies. I I absolutely adore the writer and the director. I, I've been really into their work a little bit. I'll tell you more about that next week, you know? So that's it. Y'all be safe. 
follow us on twinkleberry.com and hey, come check out the website follow me on dj twin two that's dj t-w-i-n-t-w-o and holla at your boy all right y'all take care bye holla